Hi, my name is Bernard Clausens. I'm a manager at the JAC responsible for bonds, repos, and bond derivatives. This podcast will briefly cover inflation, time value of money, interest, and yield curves. Firstly, let's talk about inflation. Inflation is defined as the rise in the general level of prices of goods and services in an economy over a period of time. So why is inflation so important? Well, if you earned 100 rand a month and could buy a packet of meat, a carton of milk and three loaves of bread today, but the price of these goods went up tomorrow, then you would perhaps only be able to buy two loaves of bread. Effectively, this means that for the same amount of effort or work, you would be getting less, in other words, poorer. This is why trade unions and employees in general push for annual inflationary increases. Achieving an annual increase equivalent to inflation would mean that you are not getting poorer, although you are not getting richer either. I suppose the next question to answer is, how is inflation measured? Inflation is measured through a number of indices. The most common, however, is CPI. CPI is the Consumer Price Index. It measures changes through time in the price level of goods and services purchased by households. The prices of goods and services consumed by South Africans are used to calculate an inflation rate for the whole economy. But not all South Africans consume the same goods or services, nor do they consume them in the same proportions. The CPI cannot measure the way individual households experience inflation or how they spend their money. As a result, the inflation rate is based on the estimated total expenditure of all South African households. Having a look at the current CPI basket, you will see that the three biggest components of inflation as per the CPI are housing and utilities, 22.5%, transport, 18.8%, and food and non-alcoholic beverages, 15.7%. That means that the average South African is spending 50% of their income on these three items alone. Interestingly, it also tells us that the average South African spends more on alcohol and tobacco than they do in health and education combined. Now that we know that inflation tends to increase every year, or every day for that matter, we ask another question. Is saving money in your sock drawer a good idea? The answer in an increasing inflationary environment is a definitive no. You are far better off earning even 1% interest. This still means that you are getting poorer, but at least it's happening at a slower rate. So no one wants to get poorer, but how do we get richer? An annual increase above CPI is an excellent start, but it doesn't stop there. Your savings need to generate growth or interest at a rate greater than inflation as well. If you achieve this, you'll be earning what is known as a real interest rate. At this, at this point in time, I'll introduce two new concepts, present and future values. As money erodes over time due to inflation, we should know what our money might be worth in the future or what an amount of money that we are receiving in the future is worth today. Starting off with a simple present value calculation, you can see that we will need three inputs to the calculation. The cash that we have at this point in time, the period we want to invest it for, and the expected interest rate. If we had a policy that was paying us a thousand rand in ten years' time, and we expected expected inflation to be 10% each year, the value of the policy would be roughly 385 rand today. Similarly, if we won the lotto today and decided to quit working, we might want to know what the money would be worth in the future. So using the same inputs, but let's change the lotto winnings number to 3 million rand, your lotto winnings would be worth 1.046 million rand in 10 years' time. You would have lost nearly two-thirds of your money doing absolutely nothing with it. But how can this be, you might ask? The reason why you would be so badly off is due to compounding. But compounding is a great thing if you are getting an interest rate and earning money with your savings. If we use a 10% interest rate and a 10-year savings plan, you'll see that your winnings will be worth a whopping 7.78 million rand. Even in five years' time, it would be worth 4.83 million rand. We can now see that compounding, also known as interest on interest, is a fantastic thing. When you are quoted an interest rate by a financial institution, it will normally be an annual rate. It is important to note that at the same interest rate, more frequent compounding is preferable. This is easily illustrated by using an example of work. The interest you earn is essentially money paid for the work done. The quicker you are able to earn your pay, the sooner you will be able to start working again. This slide simply shows the quoting conventions for various periods. Each nominal annual compounding convention is listed. Now that we are understanding interest rates a little better, I am sure you are wondering how to figure out what interest rates are going to do in the future. The answer is anyone's guess, but I will introduce a tool widely used to help predict interest rates. A yield curve is a two-dimensional graph of interest rates versus time. Similar instruments with different lifespans are plotted on a graph and result in a curve which shows expected interest rate trends. In a normal interest rate environment, which is an increasing or stagnant interest rate environment, the curve will look as follows. 
Next slide. In a decreasing interest rate environment, the curve will be inverted. Both of these curves are influenced by many factors, including but not limited to monetary policy, inflation and inflation expectations, supply and demand of the instruments, and exchange rates. I trust that you have enjoyed this podcast. If there's any questions you have, please feel free to contact me.